Hey, 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 how's it going? Not bad, how are you? <laughs> Pretty good. How was the drive? It was long. Yeah? It was long, about 19 hours, I suppose, right? Yeah. What's up, Will? What's up, buddy? Two Flatlanders in the house. <laughs> you excited? I'm stoked, man. <laughs> shooting today. Reconfirm our zero, make sure nothing got bumped off from the ride out from Iowa to here. So this, the camera, it, it has mirrors and stuff in there and it goes through it so you can see, so you can record what you're shooting through the scope. I did it again. <laughs> I, I cranked it up just a tidge and yeah, sometimes that thing comes back and bites you a little bit. Listen, the tact cam's pretty cool. Just gotta make sure you don't get too close. <laughs> I dialed it up to 12 just to see. Yeah, I did it again. That's all right. It's not like I busted it back. It was just a scab ripped off, basically, because I already did it three times before this. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's gonna give me crap for that one again. <laughs> Whenever I go out and shoot, she's like, she's like, she's like, she's like don't go, don't scope yourself. I'm like, I'm not gonna try. <laughs> We've got our professional military shooter here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> professional, all right? Listen. <laughs> don't make fun of Jake here. Freaking scoped himself for the fifth time this freaking hunt war season. This <laughs> is proof it was a random draw, folks. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Jacob Johnson um, from Osage, Iowa. I work on wind turbines for a living now. Um, been doing that ever since I got out of the Army, so past three years. Right. I'm Justin Trees, also from Osage, Iowa. I'm a deputy sheriff there in Mitchell County. I've been in law enforcement 17 years. Uh, I got a wife and three boys, Brandon, Brock, and Brody at home. And we're pretty stoked to be out here and be part of the show this year. Oh yeah, I have a family too. I got a wife and a daughter. My daughter is Charlie, she's eight years old. I need to say something to her. Hi, Charlie, love you. Ashley, love you. I'm Sean Burton, I'm uh, 33. Um, I grew up in Sandy, Utah, I live in Riverton now. Um, I own a whole bunch of big O's in Colorado. Um, I'm married and I've got a little two-year-old girl. The last two antelope I've shot, she was with me last year and the year before, so. I'm Evan Shimborek, I'm 31. Yeah, I also grew up in Sandy, Utah. We didn't know each other until college, but um, I have my own business. I sell uh, natural odor eliminators, primarily through Amazon, and that's what I do full time. I am married, I don't have any kids. Um, Yet. Yeah, Sean's trying to get me to <laughs> have some kids. How did you guys hear about Hunt Wars? Um, I heard about it from uh, listening to Working Class Hunter podcast. So I applied for season two after it um, opened up. Like, I mean, I'm always looking at forums and all kinds of stuff for hunting. And there was just like this random thing that was like, put in for this 
this like hunt to hunt against another team. I was like, eh, whatever, threw my stuff in. Didn't think much of it. And then I was driving back from somewhere. I don't even remember where I was driving back from, but watching it on YouTube. I, was like, I mean, I don't get drawn for stuff. I mean, I'm usually like max points to draw tags and stuff. So I didn't even think anything of it. And they pulled out my name and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And what, what has your experience been like so far with Hunt Wars? So, you know, since we got out here, even just today, is pretty incredible. Um, tents were all set up. We had uh, some some more gear in the tent when we got here. The cook is preparing for us. It couldn't be a, an easier environment to come into and relax. Um, prior to that, after finding out that Jacob had been selected, we started getting some products in the mail. Um, we got an incredible loophole package. Um, it, they're blowing it out of the water. It's just incredible what uh, what they're providing and, and how they're treating everybody. I thank you to all the sponsors as well. We appreciate everything you guys have done. Yeah, yeah so um, it's a hundred bucks to apply. It's completely random. Like there weren't a whole lot of applicants. So I just assumed it was a better draw odds and going for a limited draw anywhere else in the country. It's pretty awesome opportunity and then when he, when we when he, they drew my name it was funny when troy was reaching the, the barrel he, or the bucket he's like i'm reaching the bottom of the bucket here and he pulled out called my name and my whole house just exploded my daughter was freaking out screaming my wife was screaming i was just sitting there in shock he's like oh my god this really happened and then i didn't call him down i was like there's a lot of jacob johnson in the world in the country it might not be me uh, they reached out on Instagram and I was like, okay, maybe it is actually me. So it was a pretty surreal experience and I just didn't believe it all up until um, we actually reached out and started talking to you guys from Hunt Wars there. So it was pretty amazing for the whole family even. What do you think is going to give you the edge to win this competition? I got a cow decoy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we got some decoys. Air I mean, conditioned ranger. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we heard the other guys like a marine scout sniper or something. So. So the shooting's not giving us an edge. Yeah, I've maybe taken. Well, I got a new rifle, so I took 15 shots on that the other day. But before that, I'd taken maybe six shots. So I probably can't hang with him in terms of that. But. So we definitely have to kill one. We're not going to a shootout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't have any prong or experience whatsoever. But uh, once we found out we we're coming out here to hunt pronghorn, um, just been studying, just hidden, watching all, taking in as much content as we can, trying to learn about these animals and everything else. And uh, I don't know, just that's pretty much about it. I mean, you can get through a lot in life with a good work ethic and a great attitude. So that's pretty much what I got to bring to the table. <laughs> so Jacob and I, you know, we haven't been pronghorn hunting before. Um, We've worked hard just over the last month on, on our scoring abilities. Um, are we up there with the people who grow up with pronghorns like we grew up with whitetails? We're not. Um, but we do have the capabilities of, of identifying a good animal and executing that shot. actual hunting day, day one, um, kind of wanted it to get a little lighter and we're going to head kind of to an area where we saw the big buck yesterday and check out some area where we didn't really cover and uh, hopefully our team's going to head north, we'll head south and east and go see what we can see. Yeah, a whole bunch of cows there. That would be how it'd go, right? We'd see one in the first couple minutes. couple minutes of the day. <laughs> Dude, that would be awesome. We can leave the eight day, suffer through it, to Remy Warren. <laughs> he can enjoy the he can grudge. Enjoy. Yeah. Yesterday for scouting day, we were out, spotted a pretty big one out there. So we're just going to go out there and uh, try to get on this morning and see what happens after we fix our tire. So we find it yesterday in some mesquite trees. So. <laughs> 
good luck to us. <laughs> you guys ready to kill an antelope? Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Strong north wind right now. Yeah. This is a buck that was running all the, had eight does going at the same time. Never paid attention to us, just run them does for a half hour straight right around us at about 150 yards. The same, like, I don't know if that's the group that we saw the, for the first time yesterday, because that one looks a that one healthy looks, size. That looks larger. bigger than what. <clears throat> well, he's got good mass on him. We're 100%. Cutters. That wasn't. Uh, that was not the first group. There wasn't a second buck with him yesterday. Those prongs look pretty decent, too, dude. They're not, they're like right even with his ears. So he's probably, gosh, he's got pretty good hooks. He's got pretty good hooks on him. He's probably, he's gotta be like, probably 14 inches. There's a whole bunch of antelopes straight out in front of us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven at least. Keep looking around, I'll grab the spotter and look at them. I'm only seeing does. Does eat better. <laughs> And where there's does, there's bucks. There's another one over here. I bet this one's a buck. He's all by all by himself. Yeah, it's a buck. Is it our buck? It might be. There's a good shot of him right there. Yeah. Can you see? I don't know. I don't think it's him. I mean, he's still a real good buck. He hooks super hard. He's a really cool buck. He's got good mass. I'm just not sure if he's quite big enough to be top buck. Yeah, you can see like his ears. He like starts to hook right above his ears pretty much. Yeah. The diggers are above his ears. That's a really yeah, I mean, that view right there, that's, I think that shows you that it's not the buck. No. Dude, you need good. to be pursuing this one. Huh? I'd be pursuing it. I wouldn't leave it. That's way bigger than what we thought it was. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Here's the other thing. We back out of here right now. Let's not continue through. Go back to the other road, go up and around and see. I think if they keep going down this way, we're far enough away They're that we won't spook them. You want to just go straight, head straight east? I do. I don't know. <sighs> That's right where they're heading, though. I know. We need to go if we're going to go. The one's bedded down right now. Well, they're on the f looks like they're on the freaking neighbors. I got three out there. Mm hmm. He's about probably close to two and a half miles out right now, just milling around. He just got up out of his bed. Um, the only problem is that he's just on the other side of the property fence. But when we spotted him yesterday, he was on our side. So we just gotta kinda wait and see if he comes back over or not. And just keep, keep on him until he comes over and makes a mistake, and then we'll get on him, to my knowledge. Um, New Mexico, the way they do their rifle antelope hunts is that they they assign the hunter a ranch, and that's what that tag is good for. It's not a statewide tag or like a unit-wide tag. The ranch gets assigned a code, and that's your hunting unit is that ranch. And if, so you're not allowed to go off willy-nilly in the whole unit, to my understanding. Even if you get permission on the, another ranch, you have to stay on your on the ranch that you're assigned by the state. Someone out there is probably going to correct me if I'm wrong, so it's fine. We're not going too far. No, we're not. Now we have we got four does, and we've got that giant buck we were watching yesterday. They're approximately a mile and a half out. We believe that they're about three to 400 yards inside our fence, so they are on our property. What we're gonna do is we're, we have a strong north wind, probably about 15 mile an hour right now. We're gonna take camera guide and Jacob, we're gonna go southeast of here, direction they were pushing yesterday with the same wind. 
and then drop these guys off. I'm gonna bring the UTV, come back to the northwest side, post up here, and we're just gonna let them settle down for a little bit. And then uh, we'll make contact with each other and start our approach. Probably gonna be a low crawl. This is really flat. We've only got about 18 inches of grass coverage right now, so it's gonna be a low crawl for quite a distance for you guys to get up there. That buck we saw yesterday, those two bucks, the big one, the smaller one, they could have just been trying to move back into where their spot was after the previous hunters pushed them out of here. So that area down there might not even be where they want to be. They could be just trying to move back up into where they want to be. Maybe they move between watering holes. The other thing too is we saw them in the afternoon. Yeah. We were sitting there contemplating, going over a plan of what to do, and they took off. So now we're trying to find them again and see where they're at. The property line's right there. Hopefully they didn't hit that property line and tear out of here. I can't see them. Keep, well, keep we've got two decisions. Either we drop you and I go back and try to work it, or yeah. we go back together and try to find them. Yeah. We gotta get eyes on when I can't, we can't stalk nothing. So, Justin's one's gotten scared of snakes, so he's uh, being extra careful and decided to lead the way. He's trying to overcome his fear of snakes. Don't worry guys, I got it. heat waves right now. It's cutting our visibility down just a mile, mile and a half. Two hundred yards off the road. Two hundred and fifty. So jumped out. Justin's going up there to see if we can squirt him back back towards us or Keep eyes on him. Now we're trying to pick him back up. I just lost him. I'm going over that lower eyes. So I want to get up to my knees. I'm just going to get the eyes back on him. He's wily. They're not messing around. But they ran back towards further into um, the ranch here. So they're not, shouldn't have to worry about them bumping off the property. What time was that? Like one or something? I can tell you, I can look at the time that I put the pin down. 3.45 p.m. is when I pinned him. Cool. So. Yeah, we'll just do that after lunch or something. Yeah. It's a good road that we're on, though. It's like covering that eastern side. Yeah. It's only 8 o'clock. I know. <laughs> we just need to be out here running these. Just be out here all day. Yeah, we'll, just keep we'll moving. Again. Yeah. Just need to keep running into bucks. I 
I see him, yeah. It's probably like 30 yards down from the top. Yeah. It's a buck. One of the problems, issues we have though is I don't think that's on the ranch. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> it's not. Ooh, actually, he might. Let's see, where's that? Can you see that windmill that we passed? Uh, yeah, oh, that's it's right straight there. Ahead. Yeah, he's definitely off. Yeah. He's just laying there. Did he lay down? Yeah. Huh. So we're looking at. Yeah, he's not on the property. Yeah, I think he's just a small buck. Pop up over the edge, see if we can see him. Cause I don't want to pop over this hill where they already know that we came from this way. I'm gonna pop over there. It's weird they just disappear like that, isn't it? Dropped him. Stay on him. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Mm. Oh, dude. I can't see through these piles. Yards. 77 yards. You can see it. I can't see his white belly. Dude. Oh. Dude, that was ridiculous. He looked good to the scope. Need some water. Dude. Dude. Drilled him. God, my legs are shaking. So I, wait a second. Cool, he's just got that bent horn.
Well, my son, my 13-year-old son, Brock, left me a little present up here in my visor. Left me a little snake. He knows that I have a phobia against snakes. He was kind enough to tune me up a little bit with this and, and get me riled up on the way out here. So thanks, Brock, and believe me, I'll see you in a few days. <laughs> you know what? Hey, you know what I'm doing right now? What's that? Can you see this? That's a rattlesnake. We just ate rattlesnake, didn't we? Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we're not just breaking phobias here, but we're coming home with some pet snakes. Oh. Dude, you thought that was funny, putting that in my truck. <laughs> that was a big mistake. <laughs>